booted up the Raspberry Pi 2. This is with Open Elect version of Kodi. I'm going to use Putty to log into the uh, Raspberry Pi. And one tip I found, I put the host name, I have SSH selected, which fills in port 22. And then I can go down here and actually save that session any name I want and I just picked uh, the same name so if I load that saved session it, it's all automatically filled that in and then in the future all I need to do to connect to that Raspberry Pi named Sony TV is double click on it and it brings me right to the login screen and, and then I want to run the two check commands and it says MPEG2 enabled and then and VC1 is enabled so it looks like we're in good shape what I'll do is exit out of there and let's go see what it looks like on the TV okay YouTube just thought I'd check uh, the live TV signal and see if there's any noticeable difference and the big thing I notice right offhand uh, CPU speed is just sitting at 600 megahertz which is the baseline speed and you can see my CPU usage down there uh, 10 to 20 percent range but what I'm doing here this is a 1080i live TV signal that I'm playing back. So it's playing back 1920 by 1080 full screen resolution 5.1 digital audio and it's doing that without even hitting the turbo mode. It's Look at that again here so you can see here we're doing 1920 by 1080 at essentially 60 Hertz we're just sitting at 600 megahertz. It hasn't even bumped up to 900. Now on the Raspberry Pi B Plus model, this will be at the turbo speed, and the CPU usage on one core will be up in the 90 to 100 percent range. There you can really see the uh, benefit of the quad core processor with 1080 video playing it's not even breaking a sweat it's down at you know about 20 percent usage and because of that it's sitting at uh, 600 megahertz clock speed and we haven't even hit 100 degrees Fahrenheit yet on the B plus I think I run up in the 115 Fahrenheit range. So the Model 2 definitely runs cooler because it doesn't have to work as hard. That's the first time I've seen a major difference. So that's your channel switching speed right there. And let's see, this should be, a, here's the 1080 channel. Yeah, it switches channels pretty quick. So it seeks to the new channel, buffers a little bit. Yeah, looks like live TV is working. Yeah, it's pretty smooth with the hardware codex for sure. So I guess I have a faster smart TV now. Wanted to check the power consumption. We're about point. 35 so 350 milliamps running off of the USB output of the TV still seems to be powering it just fine so it's about the same power as the model B plus so I guess the quad cores take a little more power but they don't have to run as fast at idle it drops back to about 230 milliamps so when you're not doing anything it drops the power consumption. So anyway, hope you found that interesting and informative. You can check out some of my other Raspberry Pi, Kodi cable cutting videos. I'll put a link to the playlist up in the video here. 
Be sure to rate, comment, and share this video. You can check out my channel, subscribe for updates, and as always, thanks for watching.